Uh, I will run through the viewer update situation first. Uh, we have the Delta FPS viewer as our current default, and we have uh, extra FPS in RC. Um, as you can guess from the names, these are both viewers where the primary focus is uh, performance and uh, also a fair amount of just general bug fixing. Um, and uh, particularly trying to make sure that we address some of the issues with uh, with uh, bad performance on particular particular hardware sometimes, but not always the lower end stuff. So um, continuing to work on that, the extra FPS RC still has some identified bugs that are very high priority to fix. So we will be working on getting those sorted out before we can uh, can promote that one. Once uh, once extra FPS does get promoted, uh, the next RC is likely to not be exclusively performance. So it will still be we'll still be working on performance, but this one is also going to include some of our uh, long awaiting uh, uh, merges from from past uh, past branches. We'll be pulling in mate B and uh breaking news as of today pretty good chance we're going to try to pull the mate c work too so trying to as much as possible kind of clear the table of uh of old projects and get everything into the develop framework um does this make the merge trickier and the release process trickier yes it probably will we're gonna have more time trying to bash the uh bash the build into an acceptably stable state before we are you know, getting an RC out this time around. Um, but uh, on balance, we still feel like it's probably the fastest way to get things out. Uh, let's see, what else is going on? Uh, so I think I'm, I mentioned we're still going to be looking at performance as well, but we're probably not going to do another kind of performance-only viewer for a bit um, as we're trying to get other things shipped out as well. Uh, let's see, as far as WebRTC goes, uh, the WebRTC support has been out in the viewer for a while, but we've been waiting on throwing the switch on the uh, on the main grid to, to make you know, WebRTC voice the default. Uh, timing on that is still to be determined. We have, uh, 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 you know, a pretty significant fraction of users still still using a non WebRTC viewer, um, especially the uh, the the version six Firestorm viewers that are still active. Um, so we would definitely want those those numbers to be significantly lower before we push that WebRTC. We don't want to leave a large chunk of people with no voice. Uh, so, uh, schedule on that uh, to be determined, but you will have ample notice before it goes out. Uh, question about this year versus next year. Uh, let's see, so we've got about two months left this year. Um, can't say for sure. Uh, there's certainly a decent chance that it would wind up going going after end of year. Um, we would We would much prefer to get it out this year if we can. We're, really, we're just going to have to kind of monitor the situation, especially the how the how the user numbers are changing over time. How many people uh, how many people would be left left voiceless, so to speak, if we if we uh, did the switch? But uh, we will keep everybody everybody uh, posted on that. Let's see other updates. Uh... What else, Kyle? Anything else we should be talking about? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I, just a lot of effort and time and care is being put into extra FPS uh, to make sure that it is done right. Um, so feedback yeah. solicited. Yeah, that one's been uh, been getting a lot of focus from several different folks. 
Uh, let's see what else. Uh, do we have? Uh, I thought I saw a writer here. Uh, anything to say about server changes? If uh, if you're still around. Actually, maybe writer's not here. Yeah, never mind. Uh, Dave, do you want to talk about the latest and greatest in graphics? Uh, so, so with Beck, the uh, asked what the overall objective of extra FPS is. Um, there's some more performance fixes in there. Uh, I believe there's some UI rendering optimizations and. Um, there are some changes to texture streaming so that uh, your avatar attachments will actually use the bounding box. Um, well, how to put it? Um, right now, for rigged attachments, we just assume that the rigged attachment uh, is the size of your entire avatar. On an extra FPS, there's some code that actually gets a good size of the attachment for the purposes of texture streaming so that that makes a lot less uh no I, I, we're not changing lod's um so it's it's not using that bounding box for lod's it's only using that bounding box for uh texture resolution um so yeah so now you can have a 2k rigged attachment uh earring and it'll only load the low res texture instead of the full 2K. <laughs> that that's kind of a big deal for for crowds. Uh, so yeah, when, when I was profiling it, um, the number of 1K, 2K textures in the crowd I was looking at went went way way down. Um, but I didn't see any blurry textures, so so I'm excited about that one. Um, but uh, as as Vera was saying, we, we've kind of hit the point of diminishing returns on frame rate. Um, our stats are showing that we're higher than we've been in a long time in the average FPS. We're still digging into specific uh, hardware that isn't performing well. Like like we know that we still have some issues on some AMD graphics chips, so we're digging into that. Um, and um, other than that, uh, Dave, do you want to talk about the switching between foreground and background optimizations and the the trade-offs there? That, that See, one's kind of interesting. That one went out with Delta FPS, if I remember right. Uh, and if the viewer is in the background for more than 10 seconds, it will down res textures. And that was to address concerns people were having about it using more video memory than it used to. Um, but now, when you we're getting feedback that 10 seconds isn't long enough, and we're getting feedback from other people that says, uh, well, I like to have Second Life up on a second monitor while I play Elden Ring. Um, and now when I look at Second Life, the textures are blurry. I have a monster gaming PC, so I don't care about using the memory. Ugh. Uh, so there's an issue somewhere to turn that into a debug setting and maybe add an option to turn on or off. But I don't know what the status on that is. Um... My Visual Studio just crashed. Yeah, uh, VSync. Um, any chance we get Firestorm to enable VSync by default? We get a lot of complaints about heat. some kind of frame limiter. Uh, I know we used to have one, but it was using sleep, and at the time sleep had a error bars on it of like 10 milliseconds.
Yeah, at erratic rates, it's probably hardware and platform dependent. I know VSync was broken on Mac for a very long time. Um, and I know when I was trying to set a frame limiter without VSync on NVIDIA Windows, NVIDIA's drivers were a lot better than anything I could come up with as a software frame limiter. Yeah, I know with frame limiters you'll get uh, what looks like a smoother frame rate in the stats, um, but you'll get tearing in the window. I was really interested to see tearing on Windows 11. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a while. Uh, Sorry, yeah, let me turn off that fan. The air conditioner in my office is broken, so I have a fan going. Sorry about that. If Dave starts to overheat, he'll have to turn on the water cooler. Um, but yeah, we're, we're definitely... to, to Viewer's point earlier, um, job one is to get everybody back that um, wandered off when uh, they lost access to a non-PBR viewer and couldn't run um, the PBR viewer. Um, and a huge part of that is identifying which hardware still can't run. Um, the latest uh, Firestorm viewer and the latest Linda Lab viewer. Um, so if you've got people who are saying, hey, I'm still getting like single digit FPS and I used to get super high FPS, or even just I used to get 20 and now I'm getting 10, um, please get them to file a canny and tell us where they're going and what their hardware is so we can fix that. Um, I know we've identified like GT1030 was one that was performing really badly that's performing well again um, until HD4000 was running really badly that's that's usable again uh, I know there's still issues on AMD um, Mac issues I'm pretty sure are taken care of at this point Yeah, and as far as it being faster, um, I'm working on that. Uh, but that one's going to be a little longer out. Um, making some changes to the render pipe to make it faster and smoother now that we're on GL3. Uh, we can take advantage of uniform buffer objects. Yeah, so I'm keenly interested in that one. Like, what, what GPU is that one on that couldn't get equivalent FPS?
Yeah, and that's the uh, 970. Neat. I might actually have one of those in a drawer. Uh, yeah, I think I do. Um, yeah, even us Londons are guilty. I was on an email thread recently where someone was like, why isn't it running on my Mac Mini? And their draw distance was set to 512 meters. Uh, Torek, are you saying you're not seeing the linear fall-off that uh, we're shooting for? Okay. Uh, another thing that takes a chunk of the frame believe it or not, is UI rendering. Um, and Calibolg has made some changes there where uh, instead of... Well, uh, he, he's made something that looks kind of like what OpenGL display lists look like, but for the uh, GGL begin, GGLN style rendering. So you can put it, um, GGL into a mode where it builds a uh, set of vertex buffers and draw calls for everything between like big end list and end list. It's really neat. So if you've got like a big expensive chunk of UI code, um, you can do a like ggl.new list and then ggl.end list and then later ggl.call list on whatever ID you got back and it will execute all the drawing that was between the new list and the uh, end list really fast. Fall off function thing seems like there's a lot of subtleties because, I mean, we've talked to people in other meetings who said that, you know, they kind of had an expectation that like you could have a sort of a local chat with a group of people if they were a certain closeness, but then if they're a little farther away, you wouldn't hear them. And so, you know, that having having that kind of expectation depends on kind of very specific, uh, you know, behavior as far as how fast things fall off and, you know, if there's a cutoff where it is. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I sort of doubt that everything is going to, is going to work exactly the same after all of this because we don't necessarily have all the exact same knobs available but um that's uh probably more of a question for roxy feeling we've got is being in the london city of which is a relatively busy noise a voice thing. A lot of different people have conversations in groups. There's no fall off. Everybody will be talking over everyone else. Okay. I will, I will check that out and try to uh, get a better idea of, of what's going on. Yeah, sometimes I wonder if we optimize for our use cases, which tend to be like large 
meetings like this where one person is talking at a time and then make it worse for crowds where lots of people are talking. Yeah, we tend to have different groups standing in, uh, talking to each other. Problem is, they they will be talking, starting talking over each other. Yeah, I was about to say, I feel a parcel setting coming on, but I have no idea what that would mean for the back end. More settings, yay! Yay, checkbox and slider! So uh, a little bit of a side topic, but uh, this is relevant to the upcoming viewer, uh, probably the next viewer release. One of the changes that should be coming in, uh, should be coming with the mate B slash C um, release would be uh, Linux support. Uh, we should have actual Linux builds coming out as part of our as part of our viewer builds and one of the sort of perennial questions when we've had Linux is like, well, what's how, how supported is it? Um, and uh, we're, I, I think the answer is still going to be not very much. It's, you know, it's mostly this is mostly based on, you know, contributions we've gotten. Um, and, uh, it, you know, if it breaks, we don't really have the internal resources to spend a lot of time trying to support it. Um, so we can't. You know, it's we'll we'll try to fix things if we can, but we wouldn't hold a release because of a because of a problem with Linux is is kind of the bottom line. Um, so we'll we'll see how that shakes out in practice once uh, once we've actually got something in production. But that's just kind of trying to set a general expectation. Yeah, audio and graphics are kind of like fine wine. Um, what's considered better or worse is very hard to detect on a double-blind test. Yeah, lots of good tuning to be done, but uh, by all means, let me know what your experience is and what you want. Also similar in that nobody agrees what's best and you can spend a whole lot of money trying to make it perfect. Yep. That's why I like settings, even, th even though they kind of sometimes clutter things up. But as far as 
land management and build tools. I would love to have some of those in there. Yeah, for a community as diverse as ours, it, for as many different use cases as we have, it seems like it's often unavoidable. Yeah, um, like at this point, my thinking on how to get people who are still on six to seven is uh, to take Firestorm six with deferred rendering off on uh, mainland skies and modify the uh, the shaders on seven when tone mapping is off, like when reflection programming is set to zero, until it looks just about the same, and modify the render pipe until it's running even better than it is in Firestorm 6 on all hardware. Totally possible, right? I think it's possible. At least a little close to the same. But there are some sky settings that just will never look the same because of the shift from uh, sRGB space to linear space for some of the operations and because of the shift from 8-bit int to 16-bit float for color values. So there's a brightness slider. Um, the gamma slider wasn't really gamma and is one of those things that couldn't be moved. Yeah, um, I believe it uses the legacy gamma if HGRs uh, I can't remember exactly, but uh, there is a way to make it use a legacy gamma. I think if... Uh... Oh, of course my Visual Studio crashed. Um... I think if Reflection Probe Ambience is zero... Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. And on uh, there, there is a brightness slider, uh, which I believe, yeah, the exposure slider is now just in graphics preferences. We did increase the limit to four. Right now, that tops out at one point five, but we increased the limit to four, and I think we're defaulting it to one point two question mark in extra FPS. Instead of one. Maybe we're still trying to iron that out. I saw a commit to go in that set it back to one, I think. Yeah. We ran a survey, and there seemed to be an even number of people complaining about too bright as there were complaining about too dark. So, slurls, please.
A uh, question about the change to 1.5. We're not actually sticking with that, are we? I thought we were rolling that no. back. Yeah. No, that was... Um, somebody said, maybe we should try this, and boy, did we just go ahead and try it. Uh, I'll never yeah. tell who said maybe we should try that. All develop for a reason. Uh. Yeah, in order to make it brighter or darker, you hit, you go to preferences, you go to the graphics tab, and you slide brightness up or down. Um, I don't know how to make it simpler than that. Uh, I think we're switching back to aces for default. Uh, we got enough feedback of, like, don't change it yet. Um, but we are letting people change their tone mapper and preferences. There will be more tone mappers. Um, Long-term plan is to have tone mapping and uh, color correction per uh, sky setting, um, so people can choose which one they want for their build and content that comes in from elsewhere, including things that avatars are wearing, will be themed appropriately for that build. So a message to artists is still do not do tone mapping in your diffuse map or base color map. Let the let the post process chain do the tone mapping. Yeah, I think the one Rise looking at currently is AGX. Oh, and Alpha Gamma, uh, that almost went out in the server, but we haven't gotten enough feedback on the client side yet. Um, so, hey, Games, how can people test out Alpha Gamma? Well, we do have the build. Um, we haven't seen a whole lot of traction on that build. Um, and you can, you should be able to go to any server on a Denny for that. Um, more testing is preferable. If you want a branch, you can just go here and track. I will paste it into the chat here very shortly. Uh, but more eyes on that is better, especially given the content impact that that has. Um, so, give me one moment, um, I'll go ahead and post the branch, um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a bit interesting. Just going to get more up, there we go. Yeah, it's one of those things where we think it's correct, but we haven't gotten enough feedback yet to go with it. Right. Um, and it's, and it's adding, it's adding a some data that you can modify on no mod items. Here's the, so we yeah. want to be absolutely sure before we go with that. Yeah, there's the pull request for anyone who wants to take a look. Um, it's linked directly to the branch that it's coming in from. I I will do a merge today with develop just so everyone has like up to date sources on that. But yeah, there you go. Um, and 
just because like people have kind of missed this point uh, a few times now, um, even no mod items, they have the you have the ability to modify how alpha behavior works if it doesn't have a PBR material. If it has a PBR material, it's always gonna be linear well into you know the future. So. More testing good. Yeah. Please get more testing done. And for those who are wondering what the hell we're talking about, um, one of the differences that we can't change to appease um, folks who don't like the new look, uh, we had to go from doing our alpha blending in sRGB color space to linear color space. Um, that's usually fine, but for some content, it looks terrible. Um, so that, um, that patch adds the ability to set a gamma ramp on the alpha channel to correct for that for legacy content, should you so choose. Um, we're waiting on feedback to figure out if that actually works, um, or if we need to do something different. Um, and then once we get some more sample content is like, yeah, this this works with that, and that works with this, and this one wants that setting, this one wants that setting, and this one wants to stay the same. Then we can build up a collection and start thinking about how to make an algorithm that would choose a default, um, so people wouldn't have to um, manually go in and set it. If that makes sense. Yeah, when you have over twenty-one years of content. You know, these are the kind of compromises you kind of have to make. Uh, Gaines, do you have a link to the installer? Uh, let me go on Discord. I know I distributed it there, so I will go ahead and do that. Hopefully it's not stale. If it is stale, uh, push, uh, well, a merge with develop will unstaleify that. My big gulp is empty and it's making me sad. Immersive fail, I should be holding a big gulp. Uh, that should be the most recent link. Uh, as I said, I'm going to merge up with develop, so that should trigger a whole new build. So. Yeah, it's funny. That uh, that trial by fire on making content in SL um, was one of the big motivators for going with GLTF, which is what led to PBR. We didn't do PBR because it looks better. We did PBR because it's a known quantity 
to artists who use things like substance. And there's a, a world of documentation and tutorials out there that are now applicable to SL uh, <laughs> that weren't before. I mean, I guess if there's one thing that can be said for other platforms is you have a common game engine that you can just find tutorials around uh, that isn't as much as much the case for Second Life, so... Yeah, the, the goal of the project that led to GLTF and PBR adoption was we wanted to get what you see is what you get one click import from Substance Painter. Um, we wanted to make it so that you could make materials in Substance Painter and very quickly and easily import them into SL without having to know hardly anything about SL. And I think by most accounts, we we nailed that particular goal to the point where even if you don't even know what PBR or a normal map is, you can now get materials on the marketplace um, and apply them to your prims, even if you wanted to, um, just by dragging and dropping them on out of your inventory. Um, that was the goal. That's why we did it. Um, the fact that it looks different is... I mean, I like the re I, I like the fact that the reflections, the cube maps, are now actually based on the environment. I like that a lot. Um, but the rest of the visual differences are more hassle, just in the name of being compliant with the spec. And I'm asking those questions to start the conversation. Yeah, and, and a big part of it is we've got a bunch of different viewers with a bunch of different UIs. Um, and most people just use Firestorm. Um, and Firestorm, I think, I think Firestorm even like reskinned a bunch of the build floater uh, before PBR even shipped, so the build floater in Firestorm looks different than the one in LL, if I remember right. Uh, and I'm not saying that Firestorm shouldn't have done that, I'm saying, but doing that does make documentation a little trickier. Yeah, so uh, having a dedicated technical author um, is how we got the knowledge base. Um, I'm curious if people think the knowledge base made things better or worse than uh, when the community wiki was active. Right. 
and it became so expensive to maintain that it stopped getting maintained. When I look around on the internet, um, all the great documentation I see um, comes from community sources. I, 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 I miss the community wiki. Uh, I don't know what the state of the official wiki is as far as getting right access to it. Kyle, do you know? Uh, ask me for access if you want it. There we go. So it's open, but uh, you have to ask for right access so we don't get vandalism. Yeah, that was what shut down the original sort of completely open model. The more formal path is through a support ticket, but... I have access and I'm happy to grant the members of this group directly. Okay, Coffee says they want access. Okay, coming up. Uh, yes, Quinn, actually you are right. Name changes can mess with things. I think you just have to be re-added after the name change. And I think we'd all be perfectly happy with Firestorm documentation on the OL wiki. Uh, but that might be a conversation to have with Firestorm <laughs> outside this meeting. Yeah, I mean, there was never a concern about, you know, community members in good standing trying to update the wiki. The problem was just, uh, you know, drive-by randos making 100,000 edits of extremely dubious content. Yeah. I mean, you've seen what people put on particles. C voice pylon coming up. I mean, I guess I guess we don't. Firestorm does. Um. <laughs> but we're crashing their party. I heard a rumor there might be a special guest. If you ask me to explain reflection probes, it'll be like asking a mechanic to explain ignition timing.
I, I think that Unity really has like the gold standard when it comes down to explaining these sorts of things. Um, Epic also has some pretty good stuff when it comes down to describing these kinds of features. So it's going to be technical, but you kind of need to understand the technical ins and outs when it comes down to this stuff. Yeah, I've read Christie's doc, and I think it's great, but I lack perspective. They're definitely nailing the, the visuals I was hoping people would get. All right, we are just about at time. Maybe uh, time for one more question if we have one. League of Attachment Issues, uh, yeah, my understanding is there was a server update that addressed a lot of those. Uh, let's see, we have Ryder here. Ryder, do you want to give any details on that stuff? Uh, uh, there was a server bug that was, on your arrival, dropping some of your attachments in some cases. And uh, we rolled a patch this week to all channels, so if you are still seeing it, please... Uh, 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 please enter a canny. Uh, but we believe it has been fixed. So when does this manifest? This on initial login, or any time you teleport to a new region, or teleporting or... between regions? Okay.
All yeah. right. Oh. If you want to experience a whole bunch of frustration, try uh, rewriting the render pipe while one of those bugs is in the wild. Why are the attachments showing up? What did I do? Oh. It's all your fault. <laughs> yeah, we are just out of time. Some of us need to run off, and the rest of us, uh, I guess, uh, can stay here if they like. Um, thanks for coming by, everybody. We will see you next meeting.